All right, today we've got a Kubota BX1800 subcompact tractor, and we're going to do a major service on this. This is called out in the manual as a 600-hour service. This one has almost 700 hours, and we're not sure if the 600-hour service was done, so we're going to do that today. That's going to include all the fluids, all the filters. We're going to lubricate everything, all the grease points on the tractor. We're going to take care of everything on that. So I'm going to break this up into about a four or five-part series. Look below in the description if you want to skip ahead to something specific. Feel free to do that. Otherwise, let's just get started and change out the engine oil. Continue on with our BX1800 ser uh, series here. So we're gonna do the oil change now. We've got a filter and some new engine oil. This is the Kubota HH1J0-32430. It's an actual Kubota filter. So I re highly recommend you do that for the engine oil. Don't get the cheap Chinese knockoffs. It's just not worth it. It's engine oil. You wanna make sure that you're filtering out as much as you can and those Kubota filters are really good. And then we have some uh, Shell Rotella here. This is really good oil as well. And this is an SAE 30 that we're going to be putting back into the tractor. So this is kind of the, the max that the, the manual calls for. Because we're operating it above, I think it was like 70 degrees. So anything above 70 degrees, this SAE 30 was uh, acceptable in this tractor. So that's how we're going to uh, run this one. So let's get underneath and start draining it. Okay, we've got a bucket underneath here, a drain pan, and this is going to catch our oil. So you'll see, and I'm on the for lack of a better term, the driver's side of the, the tractor. There's a drain plug right there. Might be hard to see, but it is right there. It's a 19 millimeter bolt. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna get on it here with a ratchet, crack that loose, and it's gonna start draining. We have a mower deck under here and it's a little awkward to get around here. And obviously that's at a little bit of an angle. So I'm gonna have to watch this as it drains. I don't want a giant mess, but go ahead and just pop that loose. And once that bolt comes out, it'll start draining. And there should be about two quarts in there, so we should have plenty of room in that drain pan. But I'm going to just sit by and watch it because if it starts leaking, I'm going to put that bolt back in. And to kind of get that to drain quicker, up on the top, if you just crack open the oil fill, it'll allow the air to flow in better, and you'll start seeing that drip out a lot quicker. So I popped it open, and that flow should improve a little bit. Let's see if we got most of it out already anyway. And we'll just let that continue, looks like it's almost done, but we'll give it a couple more minutes just to get everything out. All right, so it's been draining for a few minutes. We're gonna go ahead and put the bolt back in and the drain plug back in. And obviously don't forget this because you will have a giant mess on your hands when you start adding oil. So just thread that back in. And don't over tighten these. Um, sometimes people like to really wrench down on these and there's no point in it. You just need to go about a quarter turn just to snug it up. And that's it. Now let's go over to the filter and we'll pull the filter, drain that out in the next step. All right, so now we're on the opposite side of the tractor. Again, for lack of better terms, the passenger side, the right-hand side of the tractor. And we're going to pull this oil filter. So on this model, on the 1800, you can just get right into the filter. They made a little cutaway here around the, the body or the, the bonnet, whatever you want to call it for the, the hood. And you can get in here and actually just twist that off by hand. Some of the other models, you have to remove the entire thing, which is just about four bolts up top, and then the whole front section will just slide off. Um, but either way, you just need to get to your filter right here. So we're going to remove that. Usually by hand, as long as someone didn't over-tighten it before, and then pull that off as quick as you can so you don't make a big mess. And your oil is going to dra drain out. I have a drain pan back over here again like we used earlier. And I'm going to let that filter just drain out. So the old one right here, and I'm going to double check my model number of my filter. So HH1503230. The new one is HH1J032430. So this one actually was an old filter or an old model number, the one that's on here right now. This one replaced it, so we're good. And that one, while well, that one's draining, we're gonna get our new filter 
prepped and ready to go. So again, that's the HH1J0-32430. And I always like to just double check physical size of it too, just to make sure that we are similar. So you can see again, Kubota on here, this is the, the genuine filter. And there was a Kubota filter on there before as well. So now, this is an important step, but don't forget it. Get a little bit of the used oil, put it around the gasket of this new filter, just like that. And that helps um, seal it up, but it also helps when you remove this filter next time, it doesn't seize onto the engine itself. Um, sometimes when it's hard to get an oil filter off, it's because someone forgot to put a little bit of oil on there, and it's just a good step to do. So now we just thread the new one back on. And always just hand tighten these. Just get it snug and then maybe a quarter turn is all you really need. Just like that. And then like the other filters, we're gonna write the hours on this one. So this has 692 hours. I've got my paint pen and I'm just gonna write 692 on it. All right, so that's it. Now we need to go back up top and add the oil and our uh, oil change will be done. I'm just gonna clean up down here a little bit first and then we'll go back up. All right, final step is to add the new oil. So we're gonna take our oil fill plug, set that aside and take your clean funnel, drop that in. So this engine takes two quarts of oil and I'm going to just, on the side there's a, a gauge. If you've never seen that before, you can actually see quarts, liters right here. It tells you how many quarts are in there and there's a little gauge on these jugs. So we wanna put, like I said, two quarts in there. There's about four in there right now, so we're gonna go down to two. So we'll just slowly add oil to the engine. Everything's buttoned up, so we have our drain plug underneath, put back on and our oil filter on, so we shouldn't have any kind of oil leak in there. And just start adding your oil. And as it goes in, you wanna give it a second just to kinda of flow down into the engine. So we've probably got about a quart in there now. I'm gonna double check. You wanna keep it on a somewhat flat surface to get a good reading. Yeah, we almost have a quart added, so we're gonna keep going. Need about another half a quart or so. And like I said earlier, we're using an SAE 30 weight oil and that's good for warmer weather. So if you're in a really cold climate, you're gonna wanna use a different type of oil. So double check the manual, see what ratings are in there. And we are right at two. So we've added about two quarts. So we are good to go cap this back up. We're gonna throw oil fill cap back on and we always want to double check with our dipstick to make sure that we have enough oil in there. So we don't have all our oil filtered through our, our filter yet. So our, act, our reading isn't going to be 100% accurate but we want to make sure that we're not way over full or way under at this point. So cap it back up. We'll grab a rag and check the dipstick level. dipstick level, but the oil level on the dipstick. So on this model, dipstick's right here. And you always wipe off the first one, don't use that as a, as a measurement. So you had oil splashing around as you were driving it before, so we wanna get a real measurement on it. And right now, we are right at that top line right there, which is full, so as soon as we get oil filtered, or through the filter, it should drop it down just a little bit right in this range, so we're dead on. And the oil change is now done on this Kubota. All right, we have a Kubota BX1800 tractor. We're gonna change the air filter. This is a Kubota brand filter. It's number 1G659-11222. I recommend going with the Kubota genuine parts instead of the aftermarket Chinese stuff that you're gonna get off of Amazon. It's usually really low quality and you don't wanna put that into an expensive machine. 
um, just to find out that it failed on you, you know, later on. So just spend a few extra bucks and get the, the real stuff. So we're going to take the cap off of this and pull the old filter, replace it with a new one. But first of all, you'll notice how this is actually installed upside down. This hole should be facing downward. That's to allow any particles to escape out of the filter housing if anything big gets in there. Um, so we want to switch that around when we reinstall. So let's pop off the two clamps, pull the old filter, and that just twists right out. That one's dirty, so it needs to be replaced. And the new filter, I already put the hours on it. We have 692 hours on this tractor. Always write it on the filters. It just helps you out later on when you're trying to remember when you change the filters last. So put the new one back in. Just twist it on until it seats, just like that. Now with the cap, we're gonna find it says up on the housing right there. That obviously just needs to go up. So we're gonna put that on just like that. There's a wiring harness that's in our way, so I'm just going to clip that zip tie for now. Just pull it out of the way, and then we'll just tie it back together, and we're done. That's probably what happened last time, is they couldn't get it routed around that harness, so they just put it in upside down, but you want to make sure you're reinstalling it the right way. And I'm just gonna throw another zip tie on that afterwards and we're all done. So this is a BX1800 that was made, I believe in 2002, 2003, somewhere in that range. So yours might be slightly different. On this model, it's on the right-hand side or the passenger side, whatever you wanna call it, of this tractor. There's a, a dipstick tube right here where you can check the fluid level and the condition right here. So we're gonna check that first. Let's see what we've got going on in here. And that should just unthread really easy for you. So put that back in and seat it back down and pull it back out. All right, so this fluid actually looks like it's low. I'm not really seeing it register on that dipstick at all. I'm gonna check one more time. And you also have to make sure you are on a level surface and this is a this floor is fairly level so we should at least be getting a little bit on that dipstick there and that's actually low so it's a good thing we check this we're going to go ahead and drain it now so down below actually we're going to leave that out because as we drain we want the airflow to get in there so set that here for now now down below there's a bolt down below, there's a bolt right here, and we're gonna take that, pop it loose, and this will allow all that fluid to drain out. And on each side of this axle, there's a bolt, and there's a breather tube up on the top. And we're gonna do this one first, and then we're gonna move to the other side, and we're gonna drain that out. This should drain the majority of it. Let's see what it looks like. There it goes. So it looks like there was hydraulic fluid in there before, not hydraulic, but it's just the Kubota transmission or hydraulic fluid that was in there. We're gonna change that out with the gear oil. So I'm gonna go to the other side. I'm gonna break the cap loose over there to get some more airflow. So that'll drain a little bit faster. So I'll be right back. All right, so we're on the other side now. This would be the driver's side or the left side of the tractor. And there's the same thing down below. There's a drain plug here. We're gonna pop that open. I already have the breather cap off of this one. And so that's just gonna allow for more airflow again. So let's do that.
There shouldn't be much left over in here. We did drain most of it on the other side. So we'll get a little bit out of here. Yeah, but not too much. It's just the stuff that's left over down here. And that's what's gonna drain out over on this side. So we'll let that drain for a few minutes and then we'll be ready to uh, refill everything. So give that a minute and we'll bring it back. So now make sure you have both breather caps open. It's just gonna allow it to settle in where it needs to go a lot quicker. So cut the top off on one of the bottles and just start filling it up. So oops. apparently this has uh, yeah, okay. Well, you know, I could edit that out and not look stupid on camera, but it's been a long day. And I think it's acceptable to look stupid every once in a while, right? So I'm going to leave that in there. And now my next challenge is actually getting that piece of cardboard out of there. It doesn't want to work for me. There we go. Now it should work. So we'll put the cap back on. I guess it's a safety seal, so like no two-year-old comes through and, I don't know, cuts the lid and drinks it or something. I'm not quite sure why they do that. We're going to add about three of these. And check our levels. So with this, what you want to do is you want to add it. Check your dipstick and get it, you know, to the... So the level needs to be on your dipstick. Then drive the tractor around a little bit. Let that gear oil settle in. And then recheck and then top it back off because it does need to get through there around all the gears and down into the low spots. And so you just need to make sure you're allowing that to happen. Now I can actually speed this up. If I puncture the bottom of this, we should get some more airflow through here too. We won't have to squeeze that. And it's all just pouring right out now. Let that go. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Since I'm too lazy to find some music to play on this spot right here, I'll just sing some for you, I guess. Come on. Almost there. I had to double check and make sure that I bolted that other one back in. I thought for a minute that I forgot to do that and we were just Letting this all spill right back out that wouldn't be good. All right, so I'm going to do that a few more times and I'll save you the boredom of that and we'll cut this and we'll come back when that's done. Okay, so we ran into a small problem when I was refilling. The manual says it takes 4.97, so five uh, quarts. And I was on my third quart and just about finished that off and it started to overflow. So I let it settle for about 20, 30 minutes and it didn't do anything. So we drained a little bit out and we uh, checked the dipstick and we're a little over full. So I'll show you what that looks like. So on the dipstick there, if you can see that, it's really hard to see, but the fluids, the fluid is dripping off right here. So we are over the full mark but you do have to run these a little bit and get that um, fluid all through that, um, the, the axle. So what I'm gonna do is, I know it's a little over full right now, so I'm gonna run it, and we're gonna double check it in about uh, 10 minutes and see what it looks like. So I just ran it for a few minutes, and let's double check the fluid levels, make sure that they're not too low, um, and just take a look and see where they're at. So come on over here, pan over here, Ty. All right, so our levels, I get a rag in here. So 
I know it's probably really hard to see that on camera, but it is just at the low line if I test it without threading it in. And if I thread it all the way in and test it again, obviously that's going to give us a different reading. But let's see where that's at. So now that puts me right in the middle of those two lines. So I'm going to leave it there for right now. It could be that it just hasn't had enough time to work itself or work the fluid all the way in. Um, but most likely what it is, is there is some residual left over. Um, and quite possibly there's just a typo in that manual. So it might not really take five quarts. And I was kind of shocked to see that, to be honest. So it took about three, just under three quarts to fill that back up. So I'm going to run it a little bit more. I'll double check it. But right now everything looks good. Everything's <clears throat> tightened. Everything looks good. Everything's tightened and we should be good to go. So I'll just keep an eye on it for the next you know, few days and see how it does. So we're going to change out the transmission fluid on this Kubota BX 1800 subcompact. Back uh, on the rear end over here, there's going to be a couple different things that we actually have to, um, to drain. And the first thing is going to be the main drain plug, which is right over here. And I'll bring you in tighter here in a minute. But on this side, there's also a screen. You can't forget about this. And it's actually a small screen that sits inside the, inside the line. And it filters out any particles that might be in there. So it's kind of like a secondary filter. So we can pull that out. It's a serviceable item. We can clean it up. And then we can reinstall. And then underneath in front, there is a filter, a transmission uh, oil or transmission fluid filter. And we're gonna change that out as well. So we're gonna take the main drain plug out first. We're gonna go over here and pull out the screen filter and then we're gonna do the filter, the main filter um, at the end. So come on in, let's go over here and start draining everything out. So to drain the transmission fluid, there is a drain plug underneath. It is 17 millimeters and you'll find it back here. It's on the rear axle housing underneath. If you can see where I'm pointing to right there, there's a bolt and you just go underneath there and pop that open drain it into a pan there's about two gallons of fluid in there so make sure your pan's big enough and i don't know if mine is so we'll keep an eye on this one too just to make sure it does not overflow so you just go underneath break it loose and once that's done There goes the fluid. So we'll let that drain. That'll take a few minutes. And uh, once that's done, we'll bring it back and we'll move on to the next step. So we got all the transmission fluid drained out and I was actually wrong. I looked back at the manual and it's 2.7 um, gallons that actually came out of there. So I had to stop it midway through, put the bowl back in and drain it into one of these gallon containers here and then do the rest of it. And so if we look at this, you can see two full gallons here, and then we have about two quarts here. So that equals about four, four quarts per gallon. So that's about 10 total quarts. So the manual said there was 2.7 gallons, which puts us at about, what's that, two and a half. So it's pretty close to where we should be. It looks like it might have been just a little bit low, um, but there's still a little bit of fluid left over in the system and in the filter, that kind of stuff. So it looks like it was actually really, it was dead on or pretty close. And it looks really dirty right here. It looks like oil, but it's not. That's because I used the same drain pan as the oil and it had a little bit of motor oil mixed into it. But when I was draining it, I was looking at the, the fluid and it actually looked really, really good. There wasn't really a need to change it, but since we don't know the history of this too much, I wanted to go ahead and just drain it anyway, put new stuff in, put a new filter, clean the screen and just start from scratch. But it did look really good. So that was a positive sign. So. Um, I buttoned everything up under here, put the drain plug back in. So now we're going to go to the other side. We're going to pull the screen and we're going to take a look at that. So let's move over to the other side. All right. So next up is the screen and you can see where I've got my, uh, my ratchet attached right there. And I got this cheater bar on it because that is uh, a one and one sixteenth inch bolt. And it most likely hasn't been changed out because this doesn't get changed out most of the time or it doesn't get cleaned out a lot. So this may be the fact, the first time this has ever been done, but we're going to find out here in a minute. So that's usually torqued on there pretty tight. I've got my catch pan underneath there because it's probably going to drain a little bit of fluid as well. So we're going to break that loose. There we go. So even with that, cheat, even with that cheater bar on there, it was still kind of tough to get off there. We want to 
Taking that off. Let's take a look and see what we got here. So there's a little fluid you can see draining out there, residual. And that is really dirty. I can already see it in there. All right, screen's all uh, cleaned up. You can see how much better that looks. So we'll go ahead and reinstall that. Like I said, most likely that screen has probably never been cleaned out. That's why it had so much junk on it. Yours might look a lot better if you've done it before or if your tractor's newer. But that wasn't surprising. So we'll get this hand tight and then we will go ahead and button it up completely. And the last thing to do is the uh, filter get that done and refill. So. All right, so the last thing we're gonna change out is this um, transmission filter, which is right here. And we have our new one here. Model number, our product, uh, the uh, part number is HHK20369990. Again, it's a genuine Kubota filter that we wanna put on there. So we'll pull that off. It doesn't come off by hand, then you just get a filter wrench, put it on there, pull it off, and then make sure your pan's still under there because it will drain, <coughs> it'll drain some more. There's a little bit of fluid that's left over in there. And you can see around the housing there, there is some dirt, so I'm gonna knock some of that off. I don't want that to fall in as we reinstall the filter, so we'll clean that off a little bit. Make sure that that surface is clean where it's going to reattach. And we're going to reinstall the filter. Or the new filter, not reinstall it. We're going to install the new filter. So again, on this one, get a little bit of fluid, put it around the gasket. And we really should fill this up with a little bit of hydraulic fluid. So let's do that. When you reinstall the filters, you want to put fluid in there just to help it out a little bit when you do that first startup. So I'm going to add a little bit over here off to the side and I'll be right back. All right, so new filter is going to go on. Snug it up. About a quarter turn and you're done. So, and that's it. Now next we're going to add the new fluid and we'll go back to the back of the tractor to uh, do that. Actually, one thing I forgot to do is write our hours on this filter. So you want to put that on all filters, including this one. So we're at 6.92. Now we're good to go. All right, so on the back of the tractor, you're going to see the um, fill plug right here. This is the dipstick for the transmission. Right next to it, that is where we fill it. So we have a five-gallon bucket right here. I looked in the manual, and it called for a um, Kubota UDT transmission fluid. Or hydraulic fluid and if you look on the back so this one it's a napa brand 
and it just says tractor hydraulic and transmission fluid. But if you look at the very bottom, it'll tell you what it's compatible with. And we're looking for the Kubota UDT fluid right here. You do want to make sure that you're using the right fluid. If you use the wrong fluid, the tractor might not run right, the hydraulics might not work, transmission might slip, that kind of thing. So do make sure that you are using what the manual tells you to use. In this case, it's Kubota UDT fluid. So this should be good to go. And this is a five gallon bucket. We're gonna use about half of this in the tractor here. So we want to fill in here so we can see how it's pretty dirty. What I like to do when I have access to things is blow around it with some compressed air. So just get in here. And that just prevents anything from dropping down in there where we don't want it. And you just simply take the cap off. And for this job, I've got a long funnel here. And this, we can drop right in. And I can just go ahead and pour that in. So you can see how it's at kind of a weird angle. I'm gonna have to go really slow with this five gallon bucket and um, just be really careful as you add that because we have a big five gallon bucket and a really awkward funnel. So let's just add about 2.7 gallons and we'll uh, button it up. Yeah. Watch where it's, um, where it's going into the tractor to make sure it's not overflowing out of there. So we're going to change out the fuel filters on this BX 1800 and there's two fuel filters on here so we got to do them both. The first one's located next to the engine under this fender right here. We're going to have to take off the front fenders which is just held on by four bolts and then the second one is underneath the tractor about midway so we'll have to crawl underneath there and pull the hoses and put this new filter on. So what we'll do is we'll go underneath first, we're going to change that out but first we're going to be using um, Kubota filters, this is part number 12581-43012, and there's two of those, and this is on the BX1800. And it's the same for a lot of the BX series, there are two fuel filters for these, so make sure you do them both, because most people just get this one up here by the engine, but there is one underneath the tractor as well that has to be changed out, so let's do that one first. Alright, so we're underneath the tractor, obviously, and this is about midway. You can see right here, this is our fuel filter, one of our fuel filters we're going to take off. I've already put a pair of uh, pliers on here, or clamps on here, just to clamp off this fuel line. This is from the tank going into the filter. So you want to clamp that off so that we don't have a major fuel leak after we pull this line. We need to unscrew that screw, that screw, and loosen this, and then we'll be able to swap out our new one. So let's get in here, and I'm going to take those screws off first. And this mower deck makes it really a lot more difficult because there's not a lot of room under this to work, so I'll do my best here. I'm going to take off this one first. So we want to get that hose clamp loose. You can see the fuel starting to come out of there. And I'm going to move over to this one here. And loosen that up. Now, sometimes these fuel lines are stubborn and they're hard to get off. Other times they come right off. So we'll see what we've got here in a minute. Let me get that a little looser. All right. So while that's still bolted on there, we're going to use that bolt, uh, bolt to help us out to hold it in place. And we're going to wiggle that around. It's somewhat tight, so I've got these special spreaders here. These actually are helpful in these situations. You can get up underneath this line and you simply pry out and that line just pops right out. And apparently my clamp is not on there good enough. So I'm gonna clamp that back or put that back on. And I'm going to pinch that line off a little bit better on the back. 
because we don't want to waste all of our fuel. Okay, so unfortunately I had to kind of rush through that one. I couldn't get it on film because I ended up getting a, or having a fuel leak here out of this line. I didn't clamp it enough, so I just quickly threw the new filter on and, um, and clamped it back down. So basically what you want to make sure is that you have this filter going the right direction. There is an arrow, and I kind of colored it in here. You can see an arrow here, meaning the fuel flow goes this direction and up to the engine. So make sure that's just put on the right way. Clamp it back down, and then I've got this main clamp. I'm going to put that on last. Just goes around the um, the filter and holds it in place. So I'm going to do that, and then we're going to go to the second filter, which is up in the uh, up by the engine. So I'll do this off camera, and we'll go up and do the other one. All right. So luckily, this last filter is going to be much easier to get to. That filter underneath is a real pain. So the last one's right about here. So we have to pull this. Um, fender, I guess, off here. Four bolts hold it in. And once we get these off, this whole piece should just kind of slide right out of the way. And that'll give us access to the engine and what we need to get into there. So pull these little washers off the front. Oops, let me go find that one. Now this whole piece just slides right out of the way. Just like that. And we don't need to take it all the way off. We can just get it out of our way. And our fuel filter is right down in here. So go ahead and get a better angle here, Ty, just to show where that filter's at. You can see down here, that's our other filter that we need to get into. So let's get some tools, pop it off, and finish this part of the job up. Okay. All right, so we're down here. I just, I removed the fender completely. It just pulled right off. Um, I'm gonna go in here and loosen up the bracket. And get that ready to go. And I was trying to show these underneath, probably wasn't the greatest shot, but these pliers right here, I don't know if you can see them or not, these are more of uh, like spreaders, so they're hose spreaders, and they go on just like that. And you wedge them onto the fuel line, and then you're basically just going to push down, and it pops that fuel line right off. I haven't taken that clamp off yet, so it's not going to come off, but these are actually really helpful. Like I was saying, really tight spots down below because if you can't get your hand in there to pull them off, then these things are great. So I'll drop a link in the description if you want to pick up a pair of these. They're cheap. It was about 15 bucks or so on Amazon. But first thing is we want to take these clamps off. Run those up. And I already pinched off this fuel line a little bit down here on the bottom. So we're going to run that hose clamp down. Okay, and I already have the other fuel filter prepped here. And again, it has an arrow, colored that in just so you can see on camera, there's an arrow showing the fuel flows that direction. So we're gonna install it just like that there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just pop this loose. We're probably gonna have some fuel dumping out, so I'm gonna go rather quick and just get this done. One's out, new one goes back in, just like that. We're going to put our bottom fuel line back on. That's in place, the top one back in place, and we're reinstalled. So 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go put these clamps back on, get everything all secured, put the front of the tractor back together, and that will wrap up this job. All right, one thing I did forget to mention is that you will need to bleed the air out of the system. So with this machine, all you need to do is just turn the key to the on position and let that fuel pump run for about 30 seconds. You can listen and hear that. And that's gonna purge the air from the system. So let it go for about 30 seconds and you're gonna try and start it up. And if that doesn't work, let it go another 30 seconds and then try and start that back up again. So let's give it a few seconds and we'll come back and try and start it. All right, so let's give it a shot. So like you saw on these uh, little tractors, the hardest thing is to get to that um, the fuel filter underneath. It's just really hard to get to, especially with the mower deck on here. You just don't have any room to work. So um, if you're smarter than me, what you'll do is you'll remove the mower deck. But I really didn't want to go through all the hassle of doing that. So it just kind of requires you to get under there, under there and twist your arms around your body in different positions that you really don't want to be in. But it got done. We did the front filter as well. That one was really easy to get to. So just make sure you bleed the system. Make sure that you have your clamps on nice and tight so you don't have any fuel leaks going on and you're good to go.